Hello there and welcome back to another edition of the Hot Lap Classic Remastered. This time we're taking a look at the 1999 Tommy Kyra ZZS Coupe. This is a certified Gran Turismo Classic. A car that began its life in GT2 and continued on until the sixth game of the series. But by that time it built itself quite a loyal following. The Japanese Lotus is what this essentially was. Uh, it's far more known in Gran Turismo than it ever was in real life because if this car wasn't in Gran Turismo, no one would know about it. Uh, to be honest with you, outside of those slightly strange Japanese obsessed people, uh, we wouldn't know about Tommy Kyra at all if it wasn't for GT, in my opinion. So, yeah, the ZZS is a big part of that. A very cool car, this. Uh, and I'm hoping it's going to be better than its European equivalent, the Elise. Uh, although this was actually designed before the Elise, which is interesting, although by X Lotus Engineers, so there you go. But no, I'm hoping this is better than the Elises have been, because the Elises, barring the GT1 that we had a couple of episodes ago, all of them have been not very quick, so be interesting to see how this gets along. Mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, 283 horsepower, 597 kilos, very Elise spec statistics. Admittedly though this one has a Nissan engine in it and not a Rover engine which should mean it will at least work. Anyways this car is going to get six laps of the motorsports land tracking order set the best time it possibly can. Our current leader is the Mitsubishi GTO LM edition set the time of 27.223 the Tommy Kyra ZZS Coupe unlikely to beat that. Now in terms of things for the Tommy Kyra to beat the Elises. Uh, the quickest lease we have had has been the standard one that's had time of a 31.519. This one uh, is uh, aiming for that. Now, admittedly, wow, that's actually quite quick. Uh, admittedly, this does have uh, more power, but uh, the Elises issue was not power or anything like that. It was just uncontrollable. Um, far too light for its own good. So this car's really going to prove if 600 kilos just makes a car, like, just totally undrivable, or if there is actually advantages to being that light. We saw that uh, Starlet a couple of episodes ago. That was uh, quite well. Wow. Okay. It's quicker than the Elise, boys. Um, that is stonky good, actually. Uh, so I guess from here, MR2 GTS, I think that's at like 30.649. Admittedly, the GTS MR2 has well over 400 horsepower. I think it might have even been a 500 horsepower car, that one. So if this can beat that, that will be a huge achievement. But for right now, that is uh, yeah, very quick. So evidently, it's uh, not a weight problem. You know, it's not a problem of putting far too much power in far too little of a car and then driving it around a go-kart track, that's the issue. It's uh, just the Lotus engineers aren't very good, apparently. Or, you know, the ones Tommy Carter got were the good ones, I don't know. But, uh, either way, very interesting to know. I like the race mod on this as well. I didn't discuss the, uh, the racing modification. It is sort of, I guess, a bit simple. But it's the exact sort of race mod you'd expect a low volume sports car to have, you know. It, it, it's simple because it doesn't need to be too shouty. A little bit of understeer on that front end. Okay, so it's still suffering, you know, you could say that's my fault, and to be fair, you'd have a point. But a little bit. We find this on these light cars, these mid-engine rear-wheel drive cars. The front wheels, there's not enough weight pushing the front down to really get good turning grip, which is the problem with these cars. So you get understeer through some of the uh, continuous corners. For like little corrections and stuff, it, it's brilliant. Like it, The handling's really snappy. It's just long corners like that this car just gets stuck at. Just cannot deal with them whatsoever. 30.775, we'll take that. 
we will take that, that is good. That is quite interesting for a reason you'll see in a second. But yeah, good car, good car. It, it, okay, so good car, don't get me wrong. Couple of issues, again, we mentioned that sort of long continuous corners this seems to struggle with just from the understeer. Uh, another thing to really raise on this is that issue happened when I tried to push it and we saw that second lap was the quickest one, which is usually a bad sign a car really can't be pushed too much. It needs that sort of first lap, the feeler lap, where I don't really try and go extreme on it. I just try and set a good banker time. This car benefited from that. So, yeah, a bit of a an issue there in that you just can't really get it down too well so but nevertheless it set a good lap time we will take it a 30.775 puts it into 164th place which means it is a thousandth of a second quicker than the new beetle two thousandth of a second quicker than the corvette and four thousand up on the uh, eg civic yeah I, I hope there's never a tie in that section of the leaderboard i just want everything to be within you know, a thousandth of each other. I think that would be hilarious because, I mean, there's not too much gap between this and that skyline now. So, yeah, interesting. Uh, interesting placement for this. In terms of cars, this is comparable to uh, not quite as quick as the MR2 GTS. As I mentioned, that car was pushing 500 horsepower. So, that's a good one. TVR Griffith as well. Uh, one of the slowest TVRs we've had because it was just mad. Um... NSX quicker than the NSX, quicker than Type S NSX. So, yeah, that's quite surprising considering the NSX has perhaps the polar opposite issue with this car. This car's too light and too powerful, whereas the NSX just isn't enough of either because it's naturally aspirated and can't really make a good amount of power. So, yeah, interesting, interesting. I'm glad to have given the ZZS. Uh, a drive around there, and I'm glad that it didn't handle like an Elise at all because you know this is 0.7 up on an Elise, something like that. So, uh, I'm for obvious reasons. So, there you go. Anyways, that's it for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching. Join me next time when I'll be driving something completely different. Until then, farewell. Let it go.